Welcome to the Artistic Enrichment Channel. I'm Jeff Ward. I hope you learned something new or helpful today as you strive to develop your artistic talents. Hello my fellow artists, I'm out in the garage today and we're going to learn how to create an inexpensive alternative to painting on stretch canvas or linen. We'll start with a standard 3 16 inch tempered masonite hardboard and prepare it so that you can paint right on top and create a variety of surface textures. I pulled out a selection of samples here in front of me, all done on this type of panel. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly talk about surface, just to let you know that you can paint on just about anything, as long as it's sealed um, or there's a barrier created between your surface and the oil painting. Traditionally, we have things such as Belgian linen, we have uh, stretched cotton canvas. I've even taken stretched cotton canvas and adhered parchment paper to it and then toned it so you could get an a interesting effect. And you can paint on things just as basic as plywood, however it does need to be prepared. Uh, I've taken this piece of plywood and distressed the surface and uh, was able to paint on top of that. It's called masonite or tempered hardboard and uh, it had a sticker on the back calling itself yuga board. It has a rough surface on one side and a smooth surface on the other. This smooth surface gives us a great painting surface. For only $27 I brought home two of these large sheets which we were then able to cut down to 34 panels, all standard sizes and with very little waste. If you do not have access to a table saw, that's okay, most people don't. There are plenty of other options for cutting this down to size. My next choice after a table saw would be a skill saw. As with any of these options, you will need a table of some type to raise the board off the ground to cut it safely. If you purchase your board at a big box hardware store, they might offer a smaller size or be able to cut it in half for you so you can actually bring it home in your car. A reciprocating saw or a scale saw or even a hand saw might be another choice but these will most likely mar the surface of your board. I have used a drywall saw and I was surprised at how well it worked although it was hard to keep straight on longer cuts. For those of you on a serious budget you can actually cut through this board with an exacto or a utility knife. Here I'm demonstrating how you can process the 3 16 inch hardboard with a utility knife. Keep in mind it will take numerous cuts along with a metal straight edge and a little patience. The thinner eighth inch board is however much easier to cut this way. If you have any raised or rough edges after your main cuts you can easily smooth those out with sandpaper or a file or a wood plane. Keep in mind almost any traditional picture frame will cover up all of your edges anyway. If you're going for a more modern floating frame where the edges are exposed, then it pays to work the edges with as much precision as possible. Historically, most of the surfaces we love to paint on come from nature, such as cotton, linen, or wood. Unfortunately, all of these contain little particles known as lignans. These lignans give the material its earthly color, but are terribly acidic. It will eventually turn your painting yellow and slowly destroy it over time. To avoid this, we have to create a barrier of some kind between the surface and the painting. There are hundreds of secret recipes, some oil-based primers, some water-based. But the easiest and most commonly used bar barrier is a product called gesso. It's essentially acrylic polymer paint, but differs due to its high concentration of chalk or gypsum. This gives it uh, the ability to coat so thoroughly and opaquely. All right, the next step in the process is to lay out your panels on a surface that you can definitely get covered with paint. Uh, this table looks dirty, but I've kept it uh, swept off. Most of this is dried paint. You want to sweep it off or vacuum it off so you don't want to get that uh, dusty material that you just uh, created <coughs> cutting the boards into the gesso. You want to avoid that. You can use any old brush. These are really cheap brushes from Harbor Freight. Occasionally they'll leave a, 
uh, <clears throat> hair or two in the gesso which you have to dig out so that's a little bit annoying but um, I like them because after you're done you just throw them away just gonna get some of this gesso on there I'm not too picky certainly don't want to do this on your nice carpet do it outside over the lawn in the garage somewhere you can get messy it's fun I'm just gonna take what I've laid out here and move it around that panel until I get good coverage it's almost possible to get perfectly complete coverage on the first coat. So this is going to require at least two coats, and I'll teach you what to do in between. As it begins to dry, you start watching it. It's still super wet. So before it gets too dry, you can take the brush that you've used, and with just the weight of that brush, um, in between, say, two fingers, can drag it lightly across that surface and as you drag it across that surface it'll create streaks but they're directional streaks right so and then if you do some across say the other direction even lighter what that will do is give you that uh, impression of sort of a crisscross or a hatch pattern and what that does is um, gives it sort of that uh, subconscious feel of canvas woven canvas texture so if you want to be a little more free with it a little more expressive you can come back and uh, lightly brush across that surface just dragging the ends of that paintbrush across and I'm rotating my wrist um, <clears throat> as I sweep back and forth across the surface that's going to give it more of a random kind of uh, arbitrary brush stroke pattern and I think it also kind of blends well I like this kind of a pattern in between coats of gesso you will notice that the surface dries faster than the edges in order to avoid globs of dried gesso which builds up on the edges simply scrape them off with a straight edge while they are still wet if you forget you can still file them or sand them off later once the first coat is thoroughly dry, you can sand the gesso using 220 or 100 grit sandpaper and trim up the edges with a file. The circular pattern works well and you will be surprised at how incredibly smooth you can make this surface. If you sand too much and break through the gesso layer, you may mar the surface of the panel, which can be difficult to cover up. Simply repeat the gesso and sanding process at least one more time and you'll be ready to paint. All right, here they are, finished product. Gessoed hardboard panels. These are ready to go. And don't think for a second, just because it's not uh, canvas or linen, that it's somehow not as valid uh, or, uh, or as valuable of a, of a painting surface to work on. I've seen these panels hundreds of years old by old masters and panels um, in uh, modern galleries all throughout uh, the United States. So. Um, it's an excellent surface. I like it because it's smooth and, and you can be very precise on this panel, but even with this texture, it also feels like there's a nice underpainting underneath. Join me in a future video, and we're going to learn how to tone our surface, add a little bit of color, so that it's, uh, it's ready to go for our finished painting. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Artistic Enrichment channel. You can reach me at artisticenrichment at gmail.com. And if I can't answer your questions directly, I will try to address them in the next video.